Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the Big Questions from Manor Church of England Academy in York. I'm Nicky Campbell. On Thursday, Justin Welby was enthroned as Archbishop of Canterbury. He's the 105th priest to hold that office in a line stretching all the way back to St Augustine in 597. Well, Augustine's task was to convert the English to Christianity. Archbishop Welby has to justify the privileged position of the Church of England in a society that is increasingly non-religious or non-Christian. So this morning we're asking just one very big question. Should Britain become a secular state? To debate this, we've assembled distinguished philosophers, secularists, humanists, churchmen, and believers from various faiths on both sides. And they'll be encouraged by our very lively York audience. And you can join in too via Twitter or you can log on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions where you'll find links to continue the discussion online. Well, the last census, census shows how religious belief has changed in Britain. Despite a growing population, there are four million fewer Christians now than ten years ago, making up only 59% of the population in England and Wales. And a, a quarter now say... They have no religion at all. And the fastest growing religious belief is Islam, which has risen by 75% to form 5% of the population. Now, it's estimated that by 2018, Christians could be in a minority. And currently, the Church of England can only lay claim to four in ten. Has the time come for Britain to become a secular state? Well, um, Bishop Nazir Ali... It's always great to have you on this programme. It's good to be here. Um, <clears throat> fewer Christians than ever before, more people of no faith than ever before, more people of different faiths than ever before. Surely we have to think very seriously about becoming officially a secular society, a secular state. Yes. Well, I think the question is not just about more or less people. The question is, what has brought this country to where it is today? So take constitutional monarchy. Constitutional monarchy is taken directly from the Bible. I can give you chapter and verse if you like. Uh, the idea of representative government arose in a Christian milieu. The Charter of Liberties of Henry I, followed by Magna Carta, were all inspired by Christian ideas. So the, the question is not the privilege of this or that church, but what we are going to do with this heritage. Now, whatever the figures may say, I have not found any energy in this country uh, for a secular state. Um, if there is, I'd like to, to know about it. Uh, it's not just the history, it's also what will you do today? I mean, I have just written an article on the coronation service. The coronation service is a deeply Christian service. It's a service of Holy Communion. Uh, and in it, the Queen uh, professes to uphold the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel. Now, do people want a secular coronation service? I've not found uh, much opinion... Uh, in that way, and certainly those who are going to be in charge of it are not planning such a service. But this is not so, about an irreligious society. It's about a society which recognises all religions and those of no religion at all. It's about equality. Well, it? of course it must do so. I mean, and, and it is the Christian faith that has led to the recognition of such freedom and plurality. So it's our core... A measure of appreciation for what you Thank said. You. AC, AC Grayling, it's not just about our history. Well, it is. It's about our history and traditions, but it's about the core values of our society. Well, we now see from the census returns that there are many different opinions about uh, um, how we should live together, how we should live together responsibly in our society. And uh, the point about secularism is it's not about, it's not for and against religion as such, but it's about the place of religious voices in the public square and the place about voices that don't have a religious commitment. So it's about inclusion. It's about everybody. It's about making the public square a place where everybody can have their say. Everybody has a, a right to have their say, to try and persuade people to their point of view. But to privilege one kind of faith, or even worse, one church in the public square, is implicitly to disadvantage other people and to uh, send the message out that uh, there is just one right way to think about things and one line that everybody has to toe up to. 
really secularism is about inclusion. It's about making sure that everybody has their say. And it's also about recognizing that um, all the different faiths, and of course there are many of them, and there are many different varieties and flavors of particular faiths, that uh, none of them should be given a, a predominant position. That the historical reasons why the Church of England has this massively overinflated presence in the public square is now something of the past. And what we should do now is to see the public domain as somewhere where all of us, believers and non-believers alike, of all the different kinds of attitudes, should be treated equally and with equal respect. And this actually... <laughs> no, allow me, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you'll allow me, I'll well, get... I the church, the, because the, the Church of England got a, a, a dishonourable mention there. From well, I, I'm there. very glad to hear Professor Grayling say what he's just said, because that is not how he writes. I mean, in his writing, he tells religious people to go back to the private sphere and tells them they have no place in the public sphere. So is he taking back what he has written? Uh, but but uh, may I continue, or mm. would you like him to answer that? <laughs> would you, what would you like? What would you like? I'd like to, to continue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I'd like to answer that. <laughs> may, oh, may I answer you, Bishop? Of course, please. Um, because I, I think you have misread me. I've said again and again that. Uh, we, we all have our views and we all are perfectly entitled to push our views. But the, what we have to recognise is that our, our views um, must be get the support that is genuine, that, that you know, 3% of the population of England will go very regularly to a Church of England oh, service. I don't know where and you yet, get that, those figures from. I mean, where are those figures from? Check them the, up. I'll, BBC, I'll send... BBC Soul of Britain you got figures, 23% uh, <laughs> regular and 40% uh, occasional churchgoers, and more than 50% once or twice a year. So I don't know where you get those figures from. Well, 1.7 million people in a month, apparently. But to listen, this is the thing. People in a, sec in a true, of England, in, in a true sec secular society, people are neither advantaged or disadvantaged because of their belief or lack of it. Absolutely Baroness. not true. Because if you actually look at France, which is a constitutionally secular country, you find the tyranny of secularism. Yeah. So that in a country where people can dress as they wish, Muslim women are not allowed yeah. to dress as they wish because the state dictates it. But it needn't be. A, we are a very different country. It needn't be, a, as you describe it, a tyranny of secularism here. Um, you, you should be arguing, should you not, Baroness, in favour of secularism because in all religions, including your own, are given equal status. But I think that in, 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 in Christianity, there is understanding of a faith that decides people to take different paths. In secularism, there is actually an understanding of no faith, and therefore people of all faith are marginalised yeah. and mm. feel actually yeah. and disempowered. We're talking about yeah. different forms of well, hang on, Jonathan and Maynard, this is, this, the, we hear this a lot, uh, Rabbi Doctor. We hear this a lot. This is, the, this is what the secularism means to a significant amount of people. It means the onward march of what they describe as militant atheism. I think what we actually want is neither a dominance of one or the other, but inclusivity of all. Uh, yeah. Because actually we are already a secular state. It just so happens we have an important Christian and religious history, and also I would say a lingering culture. I mean, every year I, a Jew, and a Sikh send each other Christmas cards, so we communicate through the church. But the point is that although the country is secular, the institutions aren't. Uh, and yes, we have a secular marriage and secular funerals, but, but for instance, uh, 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 over-representation of the church in the House of Lords, uh, we have over-representation of faith schools, and the problem is we need to, to, to do really what we do with the Queen. In other words, that the Church of England should have a ceremonial role, but not an executive or legislative role. And with a queen, she's the titular head, but she has no power. It's a very British solution, which allows everyone to be included. But it actually seems to me... <laughs> that when you actually talk about over-representation mm -hmm. uh, in the House of Lords, you know, you have a group of bishops, but you also have... You have always had a much number, much greater number of Muslims in the House of Lords than you ever did in the House of but Lords. These are, but these are, these are, if you'll, if you'll allow me, these are unelected religious representatives in the legislature. The only other country I can think of where that happens is Iran. <laughs> yeah, and that's true. Yes. But is that, that, is that, that true, true? That is true. Actually, that is true. The only other country, and I don't think that's a, that's a shiny example of, of a country that we want to be like. You know, I think the, 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 well, hang on, I'll come back to you, Bishop. Bishop. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Bishop. The Iran example is completely irrelevant. And uh, can I just say, as an Iranian, that first yes. of all, the Iranians claim to have uh, uh, an election. 
Uh, and, and, and second of all, although there is a religious pervasiveness, I think that that kind of pervasiveness is very similar to the pervasiveness of secularism yes. when it becomes militant. Oh, so I don't know any secularists who are executing people. Yeah. No. Peter? I don't know any secularists who are executing oh, really? people yeah, because they're believers. Stalin and... How about yeah, the yeah, guillotine? Oh, oh, wait, 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 one second, one second. I think this is an important point because you said, but this is interesting. Because you said you don't know any secularists who are executing people, and you immediately said Stalin. Yeah. Stalin was not a secularist. Well, what because was he? Secularism recognises you can adhere to whatever you well, want. But Stalin so was Stalin, Stalin, Stalin in theory. I mean, no, yeah, Stalin right. was strictly about recognising and Absolutely. adhering to one all credo the, only. No, isn't it? All is that right? No, well, but, but secularism is a creed. I mean, yes, exactly. what makes you think that secularism exactly. is not a creed? Exactly. I mean, secularism is as much a creed as any other creed represented here. Exactly. Exactly. Wait, 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 wait. AC Grin. I'm, I'm afraid that's simply not true. I mean, <laughs> secularism well, assertion is... Assertion won't get you anywhere, Professor Grayling. Prove it. <laughs> what, 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 what you, you, you must begin by distinguishing certain things. You must distinguish first the question about uh, religious belief and non-belief. That's the theism-atheism debate. And that's not this debate. This debate, the secularism debate, is about the place of attitudes, and particularly religious attitudes, in public policy decision-making, in the public square, in education, in Parliament. And the, the secularist argument is that all voices must be equal. All Which was not the case in given Stalin, a chance. Not the case in Stalinism, but, not no. the case in Maoism. We need to no. nail that one. Yeah, don't we? We, we do need to nail that. Because is not just Stalin, Stalin, let, him, let him respond. Stalinism is an ideology. It, and, and there's no difference secularism. really. There's no yeah. difference really between <laughs> between Stalinism and the, the, the Catholicism of Torquemada. This is because they all say there is one right way, one great truth, one correct answer, and everybody's got to toe the line. And if you don't, you're going to be very severely punished. But this is precisely they all have that in yes, exactly, 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 exactly what you say. I mean, all I'd your writings to... say that. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Audra. Just Gita said earlier that nobody has ever killed anybody for secularity. Now, I'm a secularist. According to your website, I'm 80% and a humanist. Um, <laughs> it's true, they have a quiz, you can try it. But we go to war in this country for what we consider to be humanitarian ideals. We go to war to save human lives, we go to war for human rights. I am in favor of these things, I think they're very good things, but we kill and we die for them, just like religious people kill and die for their views. There's no privileged position mm -hmm. for secularity in this regard. Simon Hill. <laughs> What's your understanding of secularism? Because under Mao, under Stalin, mm. under Hitler, under Torquemada, there was only one way accepted. Absolutely. What's your understanding of secularism? It's I very th different from that, isn't it? I think it? secularism can mean two very different things. It can mean a situation like we have in France, in which non-religious belief is privileged, in which religious people are banned from wearing what they choose in, in, in public, which is, which is not the sort of secularism I believe in. What I believe in is a secular. situation of religious liberty in which we all have freedom to express our views, practice uh, our religion or live out our non-religion. On an equal footing. On, on an equal footing and to publicly promote them and campaign for them. And I believe that as a Christian because I don't believe Jesus taught that we should claim privileges for ourselves that are denied to others. That is utterly contrary what to What about Jesus the core teaching? values that have shaped the traditions and history of this country, as argued very articulately by Bishop Nazir Ali, which we will be jettisoning? Not um, well, some of those values are, are, are very different to others. There's always been lots of forms of Christianity. Christianity has inspired people to campaign for justice, to mm -hmm. campaign uh, against slavery, against racism. But at the same time, when people say Britain used to be a Christian country, I want to know, was Britain Christian when it was engaged in the slave trade? Was Britain Christian when the British Empire was committing genocide in Tasmania and setting up concentration camps in South Africa? These are things that have been done in the name of Christianity, but have nothing in common with the teachings of Jesus, who stood on the, the side of the market. Yeah. I, feel, I, feel I, feel when, when, I feel when Stalin raised his ugly head, you got rather cut off. <laughs> Absolutely, because... <laughs> his, his, his head on a plinth. Because there are cer certainly people in, under communist regimes who have been persecuted massively mm. for their religious belief. But I think it is extremely, extremely dishonest argument to say that a secular state um, executes people on grounds of belief. And what we have at the moment is the Iranian state executing people for apostasy. What we have in Pakistan is... Um, a whole range of fundamentalist, Muslim fundamentalist organizations that are executing people if they are from minorities, including Muslim minorities, in Pakistan. 
um, uh, uh, you know, bombing them, mm -hmm. uh, arguing that the state should execute them for apostasy, bringing in blasphemy laws and so on. The same is going on in Bangladesh at the moment where there's a young people's movement against religious fundamentalism and the fundamentalists are labelling them apostates. And in this country, and we some have... Of them are apostates in the sense that they are ex-Muslims, they are not religious. Some of them are religious Muslims. Both of them, are, both sets of people are yeah. in danger from being labelled blasphemers and apostates because religious fundamentalists are calling them that. And they want to bring in these laws. I don't know anybody who is secular who wants to bring in laws which will execute people on grounds of belief. So, so Mark, Mark Mullins. An evangelical Christian. Welcome back. You were Thank on you. last week. Uh, hi, Mark. Um, back in York. What, what are your worries if we were to become a secular society? What's your nightmare scenario? What's your hellish vision of what this country would become? We end up being a quicksand of values. Christian values has shaped this nation. And I would have to remember that God gave th three things to this earth, apart from making it, which is a rather major aspect of it. He gave us government, he gave us marriage, and he gave us the church. And the government is there to restrain evil and reward good. If you do not uh, determine good by Christian values and evil by what the Bible says is bad, you end up turning good and evil on its head and you bring a curse on the land. You say that a secular state would not execute people, but what about the millions of babies, that unborn babies, that our increasingly secularised society mm. tolerate being killed? And indeed, not appear at times... Right. 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 Jonathan Remain. Euthanasia at the end of Isn't life. Isn't a better example? Uh, firstly, the United States, where there's a complete separation of church and state, and yet all, the, all faiths and those of no faith are equal, plus religion, as it happens, is flourishing. And, and not only that, don't take the word of New York and Washington. What about the Bible? I mean, the Bible has an interesting uh, scenario where the, those who were involved in the power structure, the priests, got corrupted by it, whereas those who maintained their independence and were outside of the structure, Mm -hmm. the prophets, they were the ones of the moral integrity, and that's where we want religion to well, flourish. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about... Okay. I think it's, uh, if we may talk about yeah. USA and France, it's very interesting because yeah. you have two different officially secular societies, but you have two very different outcomes, don't you? Yeah. But in the US, you've got uh, a, a flourishing of uh, religions and sects, not all of them benign, uh, arguably because it's not within the state structure. And in France, of course, you have this sort of openly expressed hostility, uh, Miriam, don't you, to, to religion from people and to the, to the displaying of religious symbols. And uh, you've lived in France. Well, we, we have that today, but in, in some defence, if I might, of, of the country from which I hail, um, <laughs> uh, originally secularism, of course, was to uh, create a, a state which was no longer under the tyranny of the Catholic Church. Can I read from the co French would, Constitution, actually? Which I think, would give equal access well, to I think to it might be quite citizens. useful. This is, from yeah. the, this is in the French Constitution, 1958. The Republic neither recognises nor salaries nor subsidises exactly. any religion. And, and at the same time that the laws came in about secularism in order to give equal access to all citizens, there was uh, instated a law giving uh, freedom of conscience to all citizens, so freedom of religion. But obviously what we see today, to me, is not secularism. I don't think that secularism in and of itself is a problem in France or here. I think we've got a much more sensible secularism in, in Britain, which is a gradual uh, secularism. But of course, France has a history, which is of a revolution. And for every reaction, there is a reaction. So the reaction against the Catholic Church developed into a hostility against Catholicism. And then, of course, because of France's history, which I think, you know, there is more than latent racism, that's become uh, essentially used... Secularism has been used as a cover to justify a lot of racism mm. uh, within such... French society today. So for me, the, the issue isn't really so much that secularism is the problem. It's a redefinition of secularism to justify a type of racism. This is such an idealised view of the French Revolution. I mean, that was also, you know, the question was asked, when have secularists killed anyone? Well, uh, have As you ever heard of Robespierre? Well. <laughs> I mean, but was he know, a the tyranny of the Catholic Church. Was was a, the tyranny of the Catholic Church was nothing, nothing, compared to what the French Revolution did. Oh. Thousands of priests, but, even nuns, were taken to the guillotine. But that's I mean, not secularism, then. Was it? But surely, it then that's not secularism. Because well, secularism it? doesn't privilege yeah, any you, religion. You are making, you're making up definitions of secularism. I mean, so, secular so. ideology, secular ideology has been responsible for far more suffering 
Uh, okay, AC Grayling. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Has ever been. AC Grayling, I wanted to come to the audience. Was the French Revolution a secularist revolution? No, not, not at all. <laughs> there, there, was, there was worship of the supreme being, worship of the goddess of reason and so on. Well, yeah. And this, 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 this is what, yeah. Yeah. That is what you worship as well. Yeah. During, during, Where is she this morning? The <laughs> during the, the, the two or three years of the worst successes of the French Revolution, under whatever name they happened, they pale into comparison with the centuries and centuries not and centuries all. of not oppression and tyranny and hardship not. imposed by well, religions, yeah, including what, your what own, what through about, our European history. What about history. secular ideologies, national socialism, Stalinism, Mao, Pol Pot, even oh, Saddam Hussein? That is Hussein, such a camera. Camera. Party. That is such I mean, a secular ideology has got very bloody hands yeah, indeed. Well, they secular. Gita, Gita. I'd like to agree with Bishop Nazir Ali to the extent that Yes, in the name of suppressing religion, yeah. that yes, 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 many, many regimes through the ages have bloody hands, but also agree with Professor Grayling that, you know, we have centuries of religious ideologies that had bloody hands in the past and have bloody hands today. But you see, I think that the is the issue. Is. And also to agree with Mariam to the extent that I think that a lot of the discussions on the French state are misconceived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of racism in France. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and, and uh, we may disagree on precisely where that racism lies, because even though there's racism, um, and, and specifically directed against Muslims in France, as there is in Britain, uh, there are also French Muslims who fight in the name of the French Republic for their equal rights, including uh, the former mufti of the, of the mm. uh, Grand Mosque in Marseille, who is a secularist and a believer. Uh, but a secularist on the French model. Just as we have but, people here, Simon and Jonathan, yeah. who are believers and who are secularists. But what is happening to, for example, the di religious displays yeah. in France? I mean, from 2004. The hijab and the burqa. And, yeah, yeah, you weren't allowed to wear um, so-called so ostensible signs, uh, religious symbols in schools, um, allegedly in the name of uh, women's rights and defending uh, secularism. But what it actually led to was uh, many young girls not being able to access education. Now, if you want to talk about exactly. fundamental yeah. values, how about free access to education for all citizens in a society? Um, so that was one. But, but, but when I say that secularism has then been uh, misused in France, it's now being used as a way to sort of eradicate religion from the public sphere. So has sphere. it fed what some people refer to as Islamophobia? Has it I fed think so, and, and, and perhaps not just Islamophobia, an intolerance of religion in the public sphere. So now that we've seen, for example, uh, laws brought in which say that mothers uh, of pupils who wear headscarves can't attend uh, school events because of their headscarves. We've seen women in niqabs at attacked in the street um, and this is all essentially vindicated because of the laws. The laws empower people to think that they have a right to then take out their vitriol on people in the street. So, Mark, as, I as, as, so Mark if I may... If the I may. law doesn't do anything about women who don't choose to cover and who are under huge pressure to cover, mm -hmm. and nobody says anything about the, it. Well, that's there not are, true. There are that's councils true. in this... It's not just a matter... The that's point is, it's true. not the matter of choice. Gen women, women who... How do you there decide genuine choice look, in a situation where people are harassed, hugely harassed. If they convert out of Islam, they're harassed if they become Christians. I, as an atheist and a secularist, spend a lot of my time defending people against religious persecution. But and you, you find religious persecution from various communities against other communities. And South Asian Christians in, in this country are quite often under threat from other religious communities, and okay. nobody wants to do anything about it. Can I ask you, Mark, that you, you, you're advocating here, you are very strongly arguing for a society that is based on religion, and presumably it would be a society that allows people to display religious symbols, yes? Well, would you allow people to... exactly. No. Can I say what I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm in a slightly different... The burqa, the niqab, no? I'm more in the United States model, mm. where, where the church should influence policy, should be recognised that by this state, that when it's, re when it's restraining evil, it's restraining evil a a as given by our maker, God. Would it's you defend God's world. people's right to wear and the niqab and the burqa as a display, as a religious, well, displaying provided religious it fit, Provided it fits with public policy concerns. There are times, for example, there was an immigration tribunal where the judge told a lady wearing a niqab that she he had to ask her to take it off because otherwise he couldn't see her face and tell, see whether she was telling the truth. And that's a public policy reason for not wearing uh, the niqab. Now, um, so yes, you have to have limits to religious symbols. Of course you do. Common sense would determine that. I, I and can I, can I just... But I don't Baroness? agree with that case. Baroness? Can I just say that there is a real problem? 
because we are hijacking both the notion of what faith is and the notion of what secularism. What the Iranians are doing is against Islam, because Islamic teaching accepted all we're faith that proceeds. We're arguing about what's being done in the name of, of course, religion. But yes, I That's have the to point. Say that religion has a. a it's, it's not. As is, it's, as, Islam may say whatever it says. I, I don't argue about the nature of the religion. Reli the, it's the space as, that's given. Okay, the Baron, Baroness Spanner yeah. Just as religion has been hi hijacked, so has secularism. Mm -hmm. So that in name of secularism mm -hmm. in France, Islamophobia is now rampant. That is to say, you really are going to have difficulties as a Muslim to attend school yes. ceremonies, to actually appear in the public, mm -hmm. uh, and you have people arresting you in front of the Notre Dame because you happen to be covered. Yeah. Now, yeah. And, and not niqab, yeah. just having just a headscarf. Head yeah. So that, you know, you're actually confining Muslim women to the four walls that, that in supposedly some Muslim tried to confine Muslim women to the four walls within the home. I don't, and I don't it's both hijacked. Some hands have gone up. Wait a minute, everyone. Some hands have gone up. Everyone, some hands have gone up. Let's hear from the audience. And, uh, Naomi, I'll come to you in just a second. Good morning. But, good morning. Um, it's very interesting how the debate has turned on to Islamophobia mm. when really we're talking about the influence of religion, of, of any religion, in the public sphere. That's, that's the essence of secularism. Um, and that's the issue we're talking about today. What secularism uh, decides is that no religion, of, whether it's Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, has any role in the public sphere. So, for example, we're talking about France, where there's a growth, um, with the, with the growth in, in Islamic faith, as there is in, in the UK. Um, it's very easy to target a Muslim in particular, especially a, a Muslim woman, because she um, overtly has a different, you know, uh, she has to wear the head scarf Sometimes and the niqab. Have to wear it. No, she always. doesn't have to. But no, it is, it, is a it, is a, it is a choice. But it become you are easily targetable because of that. That mm. is that is secularism at its worst because it does not tolerate the religious aspect in the public sphere. OK, but let's I talk about that. Yes, right. And you, you had it right in the back, first of all. Good morning. That's targeting people we'll, 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 we'll get on to that definition in a second. Good morning. I, I do agree with Bishop because, you know, the constitution and monarchy of this country is based on Christian religion principles. And when we're trying to take that rules and regulation and that foundation of this country, you know, out of content of being a secular country, um, we are actually opening to danger and open to being lawless nation. Also, you know, I do agree with, you know, Dr. Jonathan, the fact that, you know, we are already a secular country. Yeah, we can say that to a certain extent that we're already a secular country, but there is equal right and there is human rights in this country that gives people the right to, you know, express themselves. So in a way, you know, we need to look at what, you know, what fund the nation. Are we taking, you know, the principle of the country out of content so that we can make people happy? Okay. Then, you know, that needs to be looked into. OK, and Naomi, what about uh, the example of France, has it given secularism a bad name? Well, I'm, I, my kind of interest is particularly in this country. And first of all, I'd like to say that this idea that all of our values and our laws and our systems and our justice is based, uh, comes from Christianity is simply not true and it's preposterous. Uh, well, this is and, again an assertion. And, Can you give us some examples of and, why and I would, and I would, What I, I would I like to say to is that what I would like to say is that people who are against secularism in this country are wishing and seeking to retain a privilege for for an established church, despite the fact that people are clearly... No, 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 no. Despite, the people that, despite the fact that people are leaving Christianity in droves, despite the fact that people are leaving Christianity in droves, the church still wishes to have its uh, privileges by sitting in Parliament over our laws, by controlling a third of our state-funded schools, and all those sorts of things to wish to have influence on things like uh, stopping uh, uh, gay and lesbian people from having full equality, etc., etc. You know, actually, secularism would get rid of that privilege, allow the church and people who are Christians to do what they want. Uh, you know, this what was being said before, secularism is actually very good for religious people because it doesn't enforce... <laughs> no, no, it doesn't enforce the Secularism is very good for religious yeah. people because it makes all <laughs> religious people equal. No, 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 no particular <laughs> credo is, is privileged. I'm That's so, the argument. I'm sorry, but they're acting as if there's only one yeah. kind of secularity, OK? Yes. And you are talking not, about secularism, which is an ideological viewpoint. Sec being secular involves being able to draw on various different kinds of worldviews, see the wisdom and see the insights that they give us from different registers of meaning, whether it's imminent or transcendent. Being secular means drawing on a lot of things. Now, A.C. Grayling calls that cherry picking. I call it reflection and I call it critical thinking. Yeah, can I agree with that? <laughs>
really important is not so much the labels, but the values underneath them. And that if we stick to the values of equality and fairness and uh, inclusivity, and say that religion certainly has a role, but not a dominating role. And that doesn't come from Christianity, that's what he's saying. What about Colin? What's your story? Because we've got Colin here. We've got Colin over here. And Colin, you, um, you, let's listen to Colin over here, yeah? Colin, you uh, displayed a palm cross on your van, didn't you? I did. Yeah, and that's the one, you see. <laughs> Hang on, you're under arrest. <laughs> so, uh, you lost your job. Yeah, it, were, it, it began at the end of 2009. I, I'll be very brief, but I, I'd had my um, palm cross on my van dashboard for mm. well over 14 years. Mm -hmm. And um, one day, the, um, my manager came and just says, uh, take it out. And I asked why. Anyway, this went on and on and on. More senior managers went on for six or seven weeks. And uh, I got fed up of it. I was being harassed. So, I put a grievance in and we went through this long, drawn-out procedure and I asked a couple of questions. Uh, why is it a problem when, it, when I've visited thousands of tenants' homes as an electrician over the years? Mm -hmm. All my work peers, n nobody's complained. No tenants, no managers, no supervisors. Right, what did he say? What was the problem? Well, the, the, they couldn't answer it, but what, what was interesting was in one of the meetings, which, which were, like, um, getting into March, middle of March 2010, the Equality and Diversity Manager said, well, OK, you've had it in 14 years, but the demographic profile of ethnic minorities in the Wakefield area has altered over 14 years, and someone may complain. But did anyone get in your van during those 14 years? Anyone else get in your van? Well, if I had an apprentice with me... And... Did he complain? No, 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 no. no complaints whatsoever. No. They, they did produce, after about two months, they produced a letter which had no author, no signature, no address, nothing. Anybody could have. Mm. And, and it wasn't even about me cross as such. It, it, it were mentioned in passing, but it wasn't a complaint. Where are you from? Where do you live? Wakefield. Wakefield. So you'd had a Leeds United pendant there, you know, you know, do you know what would have complained about it? No, absolutely not. So this, this is, is, this the, is, this, is this the madness of what the, the, of the road of secularism will lead? Well, no, I mean, I, I think what's best if we establish a principle I, that diversity I, is fine, but there are boundaries. So I have no problems with a cross on a van, a seat wearing a turban or whatever. Mm. I have no problem with a Muslim headscarf. I do, to be honest, have a problem with the, the, the face veil. Not because it's religious, not because it's Muslim, but because it actually... Uh, number one, it impedes social interaction, yeah. and, and number two, it actually breeds suspicion at a time when we're trying to break down barriers and... Uh, and uh, but that's actually your opinion, yeah. because no, there are not. a lot of it's women it's... who feel much safer mm. from harassment... So then we need to create a society in which they can yeah, feel safe. Yeah, you might want safe. to create that society, yeah, but, but it doesn't happen then. to be here now. Yeah. And, you're and, so not gonna and there are a yeah. lot of women who actually feel very well protected, yeah. because I think one of the real problems that actually feminism... What, to cover their face entirely? Absolutely. I don't we, think that's we are the judging people from women uh, something. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jonathan. There's, there's there's actually, Jonathan, bush for it. just because yeah. it's cultural doesn't mean to say it's acceptable. But it's there are yeah. some yeah. that we don't cultural. allow polygamy, even though that is culturally acceptable I, in the Bible hey, or in yeah, Islam. But you do allow school uniforms. Well, AC Grayling, okay, what, what, what's, your, what's your position on the displaying of religious symbols? Because uh, we've seen some cases recently, haven't we, which have come to the European court. Well, well I think in general, of course, people are perfectly entitled to wear and, and decorate themselves as they like. What's being missed here is that uh, in the case of both Turkey and France, which are uh, constitutionally secular countries, the request being made to citizens is that when they come into publicly funded spaces like courts and schools and elsewhere, that they come as citizens. They come first and foremost as, as French or Turkish citizens and then as men and women. And only after that, whatever their personal choice of, of uh, uh, outlook or belief happens to be, the thing about some of the religious symbols that people wear, and especially the, the dress which is uh, so associated with Islam, is that it makes an incredibly loud statement which says, you must uh, treat me <laughs> according to one, one chosen identity. And, and what, 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 what the French state wants to say... Let me finish. I'll be with you in a minute. I'll be with you in a minute. Let me finish. <laughs> what, what, what the French state is trying to say is, when, when we provide a public service to everybody, to all our citizens, we treat them 
just as citizens. And if you're coming to us expecting that we're going to be influenced in one way or another by some identity that you've chosen and want to be regarded as the, as the principal identity, then we want to reassert this point that we, we're, we, we're, we're on a level playing field here and everybody is together. And I think that's the underlying point. Now, in practice, of course, it has resulted in blinding the state wrongly to many of the different needs that people might have in the great projet outside Paris, for example, mm. immigrant communities where discrimination and uh, lack of educational opportunities and job opportunities are hidden behind this, this different veil. And, and, and that is a problem with all veiling. So I think what we need to do is to try to get the intention right, to try to understand that there is a very positive intention behind it, even though we in this country would be much more generous and tolerant. Can I positive? Okay, Miriam, Miriam. Positive or paternalistic? Paternalistic, paternalistic, paternalistic is what it sounds like yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let me tell you, you're assuming that somebody wearing a headscarf wants to, be, wants to have their identity filtered through that premise at all times, and I can tell you for a fact that that's not true. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think you're misrepresenting what the French state is attempting to do through the secularist projects in its essence, which wasn't that when you come into school as a pupil that you have to be devoid of religious identity, but it is that the school itself should not impose any particular religious or ideological outlook, and that in that sense it should reflect the diversity of its citizenship. Mm -hmm. What you're essentially supporting is the ideological outlook of a very small minority of mm, typically white men in power yes. who then get to impose their understanding of Not what true. citizenship means to what French is now a very diverse Ford. citizenship. Ford the Assemblée Nationale is over 80% white men. That's These right. are the men dictating to brown women, typically, what they can and can't wear. <laughs> I, I, for years and years, I belonged to a group called South Hall Black Sisters in this country, which had to fight for the rights of minority women. And, and a lot of those struggles are now being characterized in the way in which you're mischaracterizing those struggles. Now, in France, there were similar groups. Ni put ni soumise was one, and other groups of, of French women from Muslim backgrounds, some of whom may, be, may have been believers, some of whom were not, who were arguing around the issues of the veil in school and so on. And some of them felt that, that they didn't go as far as wanting to the, the burqa ban on the street. So there are a lot of different opinions among French Muslims on it. It isn't just some. Mm. Yes, there's a racist discourse as well. There are a lot of very complex discourses I'm going on at the it. same time. But let's understand what's happening with the issue of veiling is that it, it is being, however much young women or, or older women say they choose to adopt it, there's also a strong push by Muslim fundamentalist organizations to declare the veil mandatory. And they have issued British Bishop Nazirali, 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 Bishop shows that this kind of secularism is also an ideology. Yeah. It has yes. a particular yes. view of human beings. He is telling religious people to leave their religion behind mm -hmm. when yes. they come into certain, certain spaces. Okay, I what mean, about America, where well, we have a secular society, a separate a wall between yes. church and state, no, America, and religion, no, religion, no, religion, no, religion no, thrives? Yes. Yes. So don't put, well, let me say, um, the United States uh, <laughs> has a separation of church and state. That does not mean it is a secular society. Have you ever read the Declaration of Independence. Exactly. It begins with the divine providence for yes. human beings and yes. human society. The US so, is a polarized state. Yes, not you a must secular. not, you mustn't confuse separation of church and state with a secular society. It can quite this is what I'm trying to argue for Britain. Well, I'm not case, arguing I am not arguing for the privileging of any church. I have resigned as a diocesan bishop. I have no privileges. What I am arguing for is the privileging of a legal and constitutional tradition without which we will be uh, set uh, on waters uh, that we will not be able to navigate. We will not be able to navigate those but waters. But are you arguing AC for Grayling. the disestablishment of the church? What we're arguing for is we're well, saying so that God should it. come first and the state second. You're arguing the state should come no, first no, and sure. God second, and therefore no, you will put Christians out of jobs because the state's values end up turning the Christian values on their heads. Yes, right. And we're finding already Christians are losing their jobs. They're going to the European Court of Human Rights and conscience is not being recognised because it said, well, you're in a state job or whatever it is. And this is the mistake of our society. And what not Professor Grayling is AC, doing... Great, Anthony. No. Yeah. We're saying people should come first. People should come first. I'll give you an example. You've got God.
saying God should come first, no. and then the state should no. take its values from what God says. Well, let's, let's hear it. Exactly. May, may I just mm -hmm. say, go into a kindergarten, any kindergarten in, in any school in this country, and have a look at the children of three, four, five years of age. No matter where they come from, my own little daughter went to, to a school where 36 different languages were spoken, every conceivable background, every faith community, every ethnicity. And those children made no differences among themselves. We adults have to work extremely hard to teach them differences, to divide them one from another. You're no, a Muslim, you're no, a Christian, you're a Tory, you're a Labour. And all, all, all these artificial divisions which cause so much harm in our Anyone world with a are artificially would know you're imposed. Wrong. <laughs> well, so let's if talk we about were, schools. If we were able, let, let, we were able on, to let, let get let finish. all the things that you people want to impose it. on them in the way of, of, these, of these divisions and these outlooks, it would be a very, very much better world. Well, let's talk about education. Let's talk about education, if I may, because in the time available to us, because a third <laughs> of the a third of the maintained schools in this country are are faith schools. We're talking 68% um, of those are COV. Why should the uh, bishop? Why should the non-religious pay for the education of the religious when they're discriminated against and neither able to go to those, send their children to those schools, nor in fact very often to work in those schools? Well, we are actually sitting in a Church of England school, <laughs> the motto of which is uh, to lead people to God. Deo Duce. Uh, that, is the, well, that is where we are now. And if you look at the admissions policy of this school, you will see it is open to the community. Of course, it seeks to be a Christian community, but it is also open to the rest of the community. And if you talk to the people who teach here and who study here, you will find that it is inclusive. Christianity, actually, because of its teaching and also Judaism, That's uh, not of, true. of being it's made. Not so, true. Let's, let's, not let's, true. let's keep with the bit. Sorry, I, I, know, I know you're a okay, great opponent of faith true schools, Jonathan. This school, this school in go. particular. Had both, you, both, sorry, I in haven't a minute. finished. Let me finish. Judaism and Christianity both teach that human beings, all human beings, without division hmm. or whatever age, or whatever colour are made okay. in God's image. Let me ask that you something. That is the basis for equality and inclusivity. Let me ask you something. And no other. You said that Islam is changing the face of Britain. You said that, and I don't think you meant it in a, that it's changing it in a good way. <laughs> there are 11 state-funded Muslim schools. Presumably, following your logic, do you support those as well? I think. Uh, First of all, parents are primary here. Parents you have the right... the 11 state-funded... Yeah, just a minute, let me, let me say, well, if you're asking about my educational philosophy, the state is not the primary agent for the bringing up of children, it's the parents. What? The parents decide uh, how their children should be educated. That is also the basis for church schools or for, for faith schools. Now, any faith school, what I would say is this, they must follow the national curriculum, they must be engaged with their community, they must be engaged with other schools, and if that is the case, then of course every school has to be agreed on a case-by-case -case basis, as this one has been. Okay, that's interesting. Jonathan Remain, we're hearing there that it's the, it's the parents' choice. No, it's, uh, it should be, but of course they can't choose because of the way the state sets up the schools. Why can't they I mean, essentially, we've got Why two problems. Why can they not choose? Sorry, I don't understand. Why can they not choose? They have discriscriminatory, because they have discriminatory policies, no, which says you have true. to be they Jewish they or Christian. Children, children, children! children. <laughs> Let's hear from Jonathan Romain. Oh, no, no. <laughs> shush, be quiet, please. Jonathan Romain. Thank you, teacher. Um, <laughs> yes, there, 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 there are two problems with the faith schools. One is a practical problem. What we're doing is effectively dividing the children. Anglicans here, Catholics there, Jews there, Muslims, secularists don't know. No, and that's just crazy because we're dividing the children, not just dividing... <laughs> Uh, we are, we are, but, and of course, we are, we are not neither the Catholic the schools, finish. neither Catholics, nor Church of England schools divide children. Let They're finish. open to the and community. And then I'll come back uh, to you. And that's and how that it's going to work. And, and, we're not just, and, and we're not just dividing the children, but dividing the adults, no. who of course don't meet outside out, and meet outside the school well, gates or, a, or at sports days. So we're creating divisions in society, no, precisely at a time when it's a multi-faith society, and we should weep quite, please. When we should be working to bring them together. But the other thing is a moral reason, and this is a moral program. It would be unthinkable to divide the children on any other basis. We wouldn't say, right, children, a school for black or white children, for boys with blue eyes or green eyes. And unthinkable to divide any other state-funded institution. Libraries for Catholics, um, schools for, for Muslims. This is, we are only, it, it's, this is it's quite amazing yeah. that we're in this situation. This, what we should yeah. do is have schools Who's for we? everybody. Who is we? Are you the parents? Yes. 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 Let's, let's, okay, Simon, um, yeah. people feel very strong over this, and I'll, I'll come to her in a second, but Bishop uh, Nazir Ali, do you want to respond now? Yes, I mean, uh, who is we? Who are these we who are the state, preventing people? 
The yes, state. but the no, state is not. Yeah. I have already said this is what happened in the Soviet Union. The state took responsibility for the nation's children. It is not the job. It is the, the state is not the primary actor. All the state does is to enable the parents to bring up their children can and nothing more than that. Can I this say, is a kind of statism that you are putting up. In the city of York, I know of parents who baptize their children so that their children can get to good primary schools. So that essentially, if you are not a Christian, you cannot get in, or it's very no, hard. That is not because the, well, this happens what in Europe. I'm sorry, I can you, tell read you, the admission, I can... you read the admissions policy of this school, you'll see it's not true. Also... Okay, but that doesn't but undermine the Thought you need to avoid the fees. Schools. That's exactly. what they say. In, Simon Hill. In, indeed. I, um, <laughs> when Michael said that Jonathan hadn't been in a church school, I went in one, I was in a Church primary school. Only one. I, 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 no, I, grew, I, I went to one as a child. I, I, oh, I've been to many more. <laughs> well, I've been to several hundred. Well, OK. <laughs> um, and what that one has in common with the many others that I'm aware of is, as has been said, people fall to their knees to avoid the fees. People who would be going to private schools, which is the existence of private schools, is a huge insult to democracy and equality. But people who would go to them, um, getting into church schools, getting their children baptised, okay. church schools giving privilege to middle-class children, Jesus, throughout his ministry, stood in solidarity with the poor and oppressed. He said his followers would be known by their love, not by their privileges, their prejudices, or their opt-outs from equality legislation. Thank you. Uh, faith School. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I live in York. I think we're extremely lucky that in York most schools are very good and there is no need for parents to have to get their children into a faith school for their children to have a very good education. My son came to this school, um, he's 17, I'm a Christian, I work for a church, but my son is actually an atheist and um, the, the only subject he got an A in at GCSE was RS um, because even though he's an atheist he was given a very good education in religious right. studies and that was a broad education education respecting all faiths and all opinions that was at this school okay and you say hi Hi. Uh, good morning. This gentleman here, he said we should put... Which gentleman? Sorry, um, the one that's sitting next... Uh, I, don't, I don't know his name, Mark. sorry. Corey Mark. 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 Oh, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark, hi, thanks. Um, Mark said that we should put God first, and I'd like to ask how he can justify that when many of us aren't religious. How can you justify the state putting God first? Well, because it's religious. a reality, because we live in God's world, and when we live according to the way God has told us to live, and he's given us government to punish evil, which he... That's what you think. think. Well, that's, yes, what the, that's, like what the, that's what the Bible teaches. And, and it's, it's, well, what it's if you don't truth. agree with the Bible? Well, this is, a, this is a difficulty. This is a battle of truth. What we have on the other side yeah, of it... That's why secularism <laughs> sorts it out. It acknowledges lots but of different types of truth. Secularism, in effect, says... No, secularism says that God doesn't exist. We take him out of the equation. We put He's him a secularist. <laughs> we, we take him out of a primacy that he is due. Yeah. And we then we ensure that children are, if possible, taught the same model, so that God, yes, you can choose him, but he isn't really the, the, the main thing. The main thing is the state, and you will grow up... If you have children, then why should you impose your religion on your children? Shouldn't it be their children? Well, you don't impose them, you teach your children, and you allow them... You allow them, you teach them the values, and you allow them to choose them. Because Christianity, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the truth, you trust that they will choose it, and you, you, you teach out of a good conscience, because you believe it's true, because you've done your research, you've read your Bible, which I suspect most these other, others haven't. Well, no doubt Mr. Grayling's written his own. Okay, Mark, Mark, see, as an alternative. Do you see Simon over there? I do see he's Simon. He's a secularist. He is. And he's a Christian. Well, yes, of course, <laughs> labels. <laughs> see, what I would I think say that's is that labels to as a are just that. And how does he work out his Christian life? Are you his questioning Christian his faith? Life? I'm saying that I cannot determine what he means when he simply says he's a Christian. Mark, it may mean it means a number of I love Jesus as much as you do, and I seek yeah. to follow him. We well, both seek to, to follow Jesus. But We're both fallible. We will both make mistakes in that, and perhaps one day we'll find out if either of us but, are but right. But one thing that isn't <laughs> fallible is the word of God contained <laughs> in the Bible, but and that's what we should. Of it are. That okay, is okay Naomi, Naomi, then Naomi, one at a time, Naomi first. To go back to the point about inclusion and discrimination... And schools. In schools, the Church of England, the Catholic Church, forced by other institutions, have an incredibly powerful and vociferous lobby fighting to retain legal privileges to for those schools which are st funded mostly 100% by the state to discriminate in employment against teachers and against teaching assistants in some schools, not just head teachers, but also barring atheists and people of the wrong religions from promotion in those schools, uh, fighting to have schools to have their own admissions criteria so that they are allowed to say we don't want any Jews at this school, we don't want any Christians or atheists at this school, we only want this particular type of 
child uh, at this school and I think it's really outrageous. Many parents do not have the choice not to send their child to a faith school because they are growing at such a speed that in many local areas, particularly in cities, they are the only type of school. And many people uh, choose them. Uh, because they might raise people with an ethos. My son goes to a In a minute, Miriam, please. AC Grayling, faith schools are acknowledged by many people to be very good schools. I'm afraid for me the phrase faith school sounds like an oxymoron, a paradox, because an educational institution should exist to teach people how to think, not what to think. And the, the, the very concept of a faith school is that one way or another, even if it is uh, a school which lets in people of, of other faiths or, or none, is going to have as much as it, as, it, as it can in the way of tendentiousness. Now, if you only look at the school that we're in at the moment, it's got a massive crucifix on the front wall. All around the school there are Lord's Prayer and, and quotations from the Bible. I mean, it's crammed down your throat in this school. I was astonished when I walked into it because, you know, having read and, and heard about faith schools being built around the country, I didn't realise how, how very coercive the presence of such a school might Aren't be. Aren't scriptures and I, bad I, 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 must say, I, I, I do find it dismaying. Uh, are those, are those scriptures bad for children? Is a picture of a crucifix bad when it shows the self-sacrifice of God's sending his but son to so die for us? Oh, is that not a good thing? <laughs> so is that not a good thing for children to learn? Is that what's about? That's what he's saying? No, I just think not. exposing children to such a violent yes, image... Yes, but it is, a, know, it's it's but it is something that is a peaceful I image. It's a peaceful, it's peaceful, 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 peaceful image. Yes. Miriam, okay. Miriam okay. Francois Serrat. Just, just briefly, firstly, I have a son who goes to a Catholic school and um, I'm quite happy with him attending a Catholic school. I have no issues with it whatsoever. I haven't found it to be coercive. I haven't found that he's come home and he's preaching to me about Catholicism. <laughs> uh, what I have found is that the discipline in the school um, is to a much higher standard to the non-religious uh, primary school that he attended. But that's by the by. I just wanted to make a point that all of the issues to do with the admissions to faith schools don't really undermine the ultimate argument about faith schools in and of themselves, which is that as taxpaying citizens, religious and non-religious people have a right to see schools that reflect their beliefs. And that means accommodating both faith and non-faith schools, which doesn't mean we should accept things like issues with admission, which I would concede. And I do think that um, there needs to be a fairer admission policy to faith schools. I would like to see faith schools where perhaps 50% of the pupils were of different faiths or no <coughs> faiths, because there, there are benefits to the educational outlook of people of faith, which all people should benefit from. Jonathan. Surely faith should come from the home and what they Well, it is. That's why you're sending education. your child to that school. And, and, and I'm against faith school <laughs> on faith reasons because I actually take, like Mark the Bible seriously, it says love your neighbour as yourself. The only way you can get to know your neighbour is by interacting with him but, uh, or her. Um, school should be about I'm education, sorry, not interaction. Should there then be. Should, should, what, 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 Audra, wait, Audra, what, what, no what do you. Audra is trying. There's no indoctrination, says the bishop. What does Audra say? Wait a minute. What does Audra say? Let's find out, children. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to know why the humanists who place such great emphasis on reason think that children can't think. Why do you believe you say you say that you want to avoid children being indoctrinated early by religion, but why indoctrinate them early with secular exactly. values such as individualism, right. high achievement, Man, values? Man, Man, children Man, can think. Children can think. And let me tell you, by the time uh, they come you? to me as students wait, wait at university, minute, really? they come with a background, having thought about a particular religious background, having been exposed to others and ready to criticize. Now you say that humanism is older than religion then why is it that these younger traditions have been engaged in self-criticism for hundreds of years and humanism has not yet made that leap? That's what we need to be doing. A.C. Grayling. You've forgotten what the Jesuits say. They say, give me the child until the age of seven and I'll give you the man. They know perfectly well that intellectually defenseless, very, very young children taught as fact all these different faith beliefs when they were when by, by the adults in their community they are for very good evolutionary reasons credulous they're going to take Absolutely. very seriously, what, that that right they're going to take very seriously what their adults really say seen. and let me tell you and they can think. some people who when they finally do get to the position where they can think about these things and reason and discover and, and learn may have a very very painful process of disentangling themselves from the oh, imprisonment of the mind that, that, that kind of early faith education. Bishop Nazirani, the, the, the imprisonment, that's a phrase, that's a phrase to tangle with on is a Sunday this, morning. Is this why the imprisonment of the mind. Yeah, is this why oh. Professor Grayling is starting a school? <laughs> Is this why? Is he learning from the Jesuits? Uh, well, of course, children need to belong to a tradition in which to think. You don't think in a vacuum. And 
if he's going to have a school, he's going to have a tradition in which people and children are going to be taught to think. I went to a Catholic let, let, school. Yeah, let me know. just say, let me just finish with, with one thing. In this country, the church began schools. Secularists did not begin schools. The state did not begin schools. There was no other show in town back no, then, was Well, there? the state was there, but the state is a latecomer to education in this country. It's the church. This school began as a school for poor boys. Okay. Poor boys whom no one else was educating at that time. Now, can I, can I, can yes, I, well, there were schools yeah. for girls as well. Yes, I, I had, there were yeah. plenty, yes. Yeah. But in, in, those days, in those days, girls and boys were educated separately, for better or for worse. Uh, people have different opinions about it. But what I'm saying is the church began the business of schools in this country. So secularists and even the state are latecomers uh, to this matter. Can you concede can to I, the can Baron? I just, of course. Can I just say that I actually went to a Catholic school? Good for you. Uh, well, yes, but I, it, <laughs> I, it didn't cause me heartaches. Are you happy with the new pope? Uh, I have no <laughs> idea about the new pope. The point is, I had to come home and ask my parents whether there were three gods, whether there was one god, whether God actually died, whether God stayed alive. People, pupils think, think yeah, and you precisely. can question it. Course, and I was, I think, seven course. years old. And, and then when my parents said, well, there is a God and the God is a good thing. And they sent me to my grandmother, who happened <laughs> to be a devout Muslim. Yeah. And what she told me has stayed with me for life and had stayed with me through my Catholic education. What did she tell you? Which she said to me, God is beyond conception, yeah. which is why it worries me when people have a microscopic conception of what God is. Yeah. We well, find, the, and we, the, the second, the second point, point, so the second point for the Baroness. The second point is that God does not need us. We need God, and we find our pathways. And sometimes the pathways is through Catholicism, sometimes it's through Islam. It's us. We are the seekers. And some people, like Professor Groening, doesn't need God. Oh. Jolly good for you. But many of us do. And we need to have a state that has an understanding of those who seek God, yeah, because right. I think there is a real tyranny yeah. of secularism. Yeah. And, and that's why I want why, to go to a religious person to respond so to that. that. Uh, Simon Hill. OK, we oh, need a state okay. that has an just... understanding of and an accommodation for those who seek God. I think I'm, I'm finding this debate difficult because we seem to have set up two alternatives. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> On one side, we've got this extreme secularism, such as France, which makes laws about what people can wear in public. On the other side, we've got this idea of, you know, Mark's idea of privileging Christianity, privileging God somebody's first. interpretation mm. and then describing that as putting God first. What I'm arguing for is religious liberty, which is not saying you can't come into a school wearing your religious symbol. It's not saying you can sit in Parliament if you lead a particular religion. Mm -hmm. It's saying that religious groups, non-religious groups and positions should be free. People should be free to worship, to engage in debate like this, to hand out leaflets on the street if they wish, not free to discriminate, not free to say you can only teach at our school if you follow our religion, but free to proclaim their views. And that, are you, are that's social right? yeah. and that is why yeah. I reject that's the French the system. That's not lived experience. Yeah. Well, and, the, and that's your vision. Are you quite that, And that's the vision we can work towards. And that's the vision which we are going to end on. Thank you all so much, indeed, <laughs> for taking part. I'm sure this debate's going to continue on Twitter back after Easter, April the 7th on Oxford. From now, goodbye from everyone here in New York. Thank you for watching. Alistair Darling is among the guests next on BBC One with the Sunday Politics.